Thank you, Maddie. I love you to be with your brother. Oh, magnificent, as always, it. Doug. And you know what? We're going to be speaking about one of your great teammates and uh, one of your captains, in fact. It's uh, none other than Jeff Jennings. Well, Maddie, um, what a player. Right. What a player. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, Jeff Jennings would have played state footy, I reckon, a couple of years. It could have been 80, could have been 78, 79, 80. Um, 78, I reckon Gary Dempsey was captain, and then Dempsey went to North Melbourne at the start of 79. And I reckon 79, Matty, I reckon Jeff Jennings was made captain. Oh. Now I think Calvin Templeton took over that role as a captain of the Footscray Footy Club. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Jennings was a fantastic rover, um, great speed, great balance, both sided, tough as they come, Matty, tough as you want to get. Really? Uh, but he had tricks. He had all the little bit of moves and zigzags, and um, uh, he had this. He had this. Um, I'm sure it was in his arm. I'm trying to remember that it was his arm that he had like a big bubble, and it was wrapped up. With, he had. I don't want to happen to that, Matty. I don't. I don't think that was the uh, the injury that stopped his footy or his career. It was tragically cut short, Matty. It really was. I I reckon Jeff finished. Um, it would have been early, uh, before 83. 83, 40, 83, yeah. 83, was it? He would have been only 27, 28, Matty. I, I don't know what his age would have been. He wasn't old. Um, he, he was, uh, uh, he, his footy career was tragically cut short because, oh. Matty, he was a star. He's not just a Footscray star. He was a star of the competition. And to be made captain you know, of the Footscray Footy Club after Gary Dempsey, uh, showed you what we felt of him and what we thought of him. And we just weren't able to get everything out of him because of his injuries. A bit like Neil yeah. Cordy, they, 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 they got injured, yeah. So so how was it to look up to, you know, to, to a chap like this who's captain in your first couple of years? You know, was he, was he a bit of a mentor to you in any way? Mate, it was just, it was just a, uh, a real fair dinkum bloke, like a real good bloke. I got a feeling, Matty, he's got a school teacher background. I reckon uh, Geno was a Geno, uh, and I'll call him GJ. Uh, GJ um, had a school teaching background. Matty, he just recently had two knee, knee replacements. Oh. And these, both knees at the same time. No. To ask him about that, that was, uh, that's, uh, was amazing. Uh, he, I got a photo of him in bed with the two knee, knees being. Um, so he had those injuries in his footy career and. Yeah, you're right, Matty. Looking up to a bloke like Jeff Jennings, um, it was a great honour because uh, I rated him very highly. He had a lot of respect around the, the the Footscray Football Club and the playing group, and particularly the younger blokes. Right. Like he tra he treated us all even, which was good. Like we were not you now left behind because we're only 18, 19, 20 years of age. We were part of the pack. We we're part of the gang, and he kept that really good as a captain. That we all stayed and stuck together. So. Uh, for me, Jeff Jennings, uh, great player, better bloke. Wow. How's that? Great player, yeah. better bloke. Amazing, amazing. I loved him. I loved him, man. I loved him. Oh, and, and you say he retired at 28. So if that's, you know, the end of the 1983 season, really, he would have had a few years left in him. He may have been able to play in that, that sort of 1985 campaign. What, what would he have been like in, in that yeah. year? Yeah. So 85, Matty, as we know, 10 points to Hawthorne to prelim. And we had two superstars not playing, and that was that was Teddy Whitten Jr. Teddy Whitten Jr. didn't play because his knee went when he was only uh, um, 25 or 26. And then, of course, Jeff Jennings. So you might have had them running around. And, and, and Jeff Jennings could certainly play, you know, rove, obviously, forward pocket, pinch hit half forward, go to a wing. Uh, and Teddy Whitten, well, he was just, he could do anything. He was, he was a star. So... Um, so, yeah, not having Jeff Jennings and to, to finish his career. He didn't go anywhere else, uh, Matty. I don't reckon he played anywhere else. I think, I reckon he ended at Footscray and I reckon that was the end of him. Um, I think his body gave up on him. And uh, tragically, uh, we never saw uh, the best of Jeff Jennings for, for long enough. We saw a fair bit of it. It was good. Very, very good. Uh, actually great. 
but we didn't see uh, a lot more of him, which we would have been, it's a bit of a tragic. Got it, Dougie. Got it. Well, you know what? He's ringing that doorbell right now, so we're going to get to see him, and uh, we've got a million questions for him, Doug. Love you, DJ. Love you, brother. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure today to uh, introduce the one and only, our, our guest today, which is Jeff Jennings. Welcome, Jeff, to Inside the Kennel. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Matt. It's, just, it's great to uh, have a chat with you. Indeed, indeed. Listen, we start with all of our uh, guests by asking, how would you describe yourself as a player? I was one of the smaller guys on the ground, I guess. All I wanted to do was play uh, play VFL, AFL footy. That was something I'd uh, I'd really aspired to. I was fortunate enough, uh, although we were uh, tied to the Bulldogs with through the zoning and everything, but... Uh, yeah, it was just a dream to uh, to have that opportunity, and uh, just just forever thankful for the dogs for uh, the support they gave me to gave me that opportunity, and um, yeah, it was uh, it was just awesome. So, so take me back to the beginning. You're a, you're a Gippsland boy growing up, uh, and country footy was was massive out in your zone. What uh, was were you ordained to play footy from an early age? Did you fall in love with with the sport? Oh, uh, I was. I guess. Um, my dad was a mad Geelong supporter. The whole family were mad Geelong supporters. So uh, we were brought up around the footy and that, and, you know, not so much the television, but uh, which wasn't a lot then, but uh, the radio. Every, you know, every uh, Saturday afternoon, the radio would go on to try and wherever we were, you just had to get the Geelong games in there and um, grew up from there just uh, following the footy. And you know, I guess... Uh, I think it was about under 12s. I think it was probably the earliest we could play back then. And um, then just grew from there, I guess. And the, the support from, you know, Dad and uh, everyone else was just enormous. And ended up getting that opportunity with the, at a young, very young age to play in the seniors at Terrell. And then um, doggies came sort of knocking and, um, yeah, ended up down there. It's lucky enough to do pretty well in the practice matches early on. And uh, Ray Huppets hadn't got a clearance at that stage. So I got a berth in the uh, first round in uh, 74, which was pretty exciting. Well, I can't wait to ask you about that uh, in a moment, but I just want to touch on uh, Terrelgan for a moment. So so this is a club that's had a, a phenomenal history of um, of producing Bulldog champions. And um, but what is it that's so special about that club? And did you have some, some early interactions with your Ricky Kennedys and your uh, Calvin Templetons? Um, no, I didn't really. Um, Kelvin was... Kelvin was um, playing in the under 18s and when I was playing in the seniors at the young, young age, and Kelvin being a taller player, probably maybe took a little bit longer to, I don't know, but I was only a skinny little fellow. I was about 11 stone ringing wet, I think, when I went to the Bulldogs. But, um, and Ricky, I, did, I didn't know Ricky until I went to the Bulldogs and he came to the, to the Bulldogs. So, but in a period of about 10 years, we had like... Um, you know myself and uh, and and Kelvin, of course, or Bernie before me, Bernie Quinlan. Um, you know the Cordy boys, three of them. You know Brian and uh, Graham and uh, Neil, of course. So we had a pretty rich. Uh, we had a good vein of players coming through to the Dogs. That uh, I think they're pretty lucky with the with what they got. So was it a fairly special club? Was it was the program there just advanced, or was it just the, the luck of the draw? Um. No, they were always a really strong club, Terrelgan. Like I, I can remember we used to go down, you know, country football is just the best. And uh, sat early Saturday mornings, off you'd go in the car, park it around the boundary, then go home and come back down when the game was due to start. So you're on the boundary. And we used to do that as kids. You know, the mum and dad sort of um, had us going down there. And uh, I just loved it. I loved footy. I just, all I wanted to do was play uh, BFL, AFL and... Uh, there's two two goals that that was one and and to be a, a a phys ed teacher at the same time and uh, I was fortunate enough that uh, I did both those but uh, very thankful to the doggies that they um they took the chance on me because I I don't think I played I didn't play any junior representative football at all I was, I was only a little fella but uh, I was quick and uh, my skills weren't too bad so I think that put me in good stead in the end because it's to keep me out of trouble a bit. Wow, wow. So I understand the summer of 73-4, um, you go down to the dogs, as you've just alluded to, and there was a practice match uh, in Canberra against Hawthorne, uh, and you line up 
Uh, I think Teddy Whitten Jr. also was a new player down at the club. Yep. Calvin Templeton. You must have impressed uh, something, Proddy, to uh, to then get the invite down and uh, and to join the list. Yeah, it was it was, it was really interesting because well, I look I look back and uh, I can remember I was at, in classes at high, at Terrabin High School, and uh, this is the year before, and um, got a, a message that uh, I think it's Kevin Webb. Kevin Webb uh, had come down to talk to me. So I had to go outside the school grounds and talk to Kevin <laughs> while I was still at school. And uh, I was reticent to go down because I, I probably wasn't all that fit then. But I think that was, I was a little bit, I don't know, maybe uh, not willing to take the chance. But yeah, that, Kevin kept at it and uh, went down. And um, yeah, that uh, 74, there was myself and Teddy, of course, who's one of the best mates, and um, Wheels also, a great mate of mine who's, who's done so much for the club as a player and as a coach, and uh, Kelvin came down. So we, we had a good crew come in in 74. It was exciting. Oh, amazing. So what was it like walking onto the field with those sort of players and or into the locker room for the first time, but also seeing some of the greats of the game? You talked about Bernie Quinlan. You've got... Barry Round down there, obviously Dempsey. Yeah, uh, there's some greats of the game. Was it was that an overwhelming experience for the first time for a young kid? Early on, definitely. I can remember coming down as a guest. Um, I think I was out at um, Bobby Bobby Rose was the coach at the time, and he had us at his house. And then we went to, went to the game. And I met Round and Demps. No massive. Like <laughs> in my day, they were massive. There's these hands that just they were huge. I was just, oh my God, I'm this tiny little ten and a half stone, ringing wet, long mullet head and, and everything. But it was just amazing. And um, and you, you look at it these days, like Barry and um, and Gary, they're not that big, you know. Yeah. They're, they're they're up rovers in uh, today. Exactly. Yeah, it just amazes me that the, the size of the midfield isn't that these days. But yeah, certainly meeting them and um, you know it, it followed it through. I think. As a kid, I just about knew the number and the name of every, every player playing playing the game. Didn't matter what team. I just loved it. It was and to meet these guys was just yeah, it was awesome. It was really good. Yeah, fantastic. And I understand that you were uh, given your number twenty five Guernsey by great Ted Whitten. Uh, how was that experience to receive the, the Bulldog jumper from the great man? Oh yeah, it was pretty special. Very very special. And I I got to know. Uh, Ted through Teddy Jr. We used to spend a lot of time together, and um, he was he was fantastic to me. He just he looked after me. He was uh, the two of us. He'd, he'd get us out. He'd make us do the most stupidest things, but he'd just say, "You got to do it." If, if, if they ask you to go and sing, go and sing. If they ask you, to, you know, get up and dress up, go and do it, because it'll make you know life easy when you have to do all your all the stuff along the way. And uh, yeah, he was phenomenal. He was a, he was a character, but he was just a, a he was terrific to me. He really was. Oh, unbelievable. So here we are, round one of 1974. You're 19, you've barely turned 19, and uh, you, uh, you you get the tap on the shoulder. You're playing round one. You must have impressed, that's for sure. And then here you are running out onto the field against your old team, the team that you barracked for. All <laughs> oh, I know. It was interesting because um, I'd, I'd only been signed up to play in the, uh, in the thirds, in, in the under-18s at that stage. So they had to race around and get me registered to uh, play. I had pretty good form in the um, in the uh, practice games. We used to have what four or five of them, which was which was fine by me. But I really loved those because the space. There was a massive amount of space on the big grounds compared to back home, I guess, where I could use my speed and that. But yeah, I had pictures of uh, Ainsworth, who was the back pocket, who picked me up at the start of the game, and you know Sharrick and. Billy Goggin, who was a legend, who wasn't playing at that stage, they were all over my room. Wow. And here I am playing my first game against the Cats. It was it was pretty um pretty surreal. Oh, so you must have been pinching yourself running out there. Um, so the excitement of it, but just the the feeling of being overwhelmed. You know, here's your idols next to you. How did you go that day? Well, it was interesting because I was roving with uh, Adrian Gallagher, and. Um, I was in the forward pocket, and I think I was in the forward pocket for three quarters. <laughs> I didn't get it, didn't get a look in, which was okay. It's the way it was. But then three quarter time, uh, uh, Rosie said, "You're going on the ball," 
I said, oh, yeah, good, good, good. And uh, ended up on the ball and uh, had a pretty good quarter, but I was blowing because I hadn't done anything. And uh, I was starting to struggle. went to go off the ball and Ronnie Simmons was a runner at that stage. And uh, he's come out to me and he said, um, quick, GJ, get back on the ball because if you don't, he's going to pull you off. <laughs> so I had to go back on the ball and do it. And I had a, I had a really good last quarter, which oh. was really pleasing, yeah. You found your second wind. Well done. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was good. Had a had a chance, and uh, opened up. We ended up beating them, which was good. Great start to the season. Absolutely, and I understand you kicked the goal with your very first kick. Yeah, I did. I did. I kicked a goal off the first kick. It was probably the only kick I'd had until about three quarter of time. But uh, yeah, it was a whole different package once you get into the when the points are up there, the speed, the uh, the aggression. It was uh, picked up very very quickly. Yeah, amazing. So, so you played the first seven games, and uh, you know you got some rhythm pretty quickly. Did, was it fair to say that you uh, you, you found the pace um, of league footy something that you could manage? Yeah, I think so. It, it did take a bit of adjustment, but um, I, I was lucky. Uh, I wasn't that big, but I was quick, and that, that just kept me out of trouble. And there's plenty of space on the grounds, which, which certainly helped me. And um, it was always sort of on the on the edge because Huppets was just going to get cleared at some point and then Ray, when Ray came, it was, uh, yeah, sort of that. And then I got injured and uh, missed the bulk of the season with my shoulders. So that was a bit disappointing, but yeah. Yeah, so so round seven uh, against the Roys, the shoulder goes out, you miss 15 games and then yeah. uh, the Dogs make the finals for the first time since 1961. <laughs> so they've waited 13 years. And here's you, an injured person. In your first year, I guess you're probably thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to miss out on finals. What transpired in that last home and away match and uh, and at the selection table? Um, I, I, I come back in and I I missed one of the games. I was, at, I was doing a phys ed degree at uh, the Institute and one of the subjects we're doing was rugby union. <laughs> and unbeknown, of course, I'm, we're doing rugby union, you know, on a Thursday or something, having, you know, game stuff and that. And I tweaked the shoulder just a little bit. So I missed that game. And uh, because of it, and uh, I was right the next week, but I must have gone reasonably. I went reasonably well, but uh, made the bench for the uh, game out at, um, out at Waverley. And I love Waverley because of the space and everything. But uh, unfortunately, we, uh, in those days, you, if you uh, if they made a change, that was it. Back players couldn't get back, back on, so game was pretty much over when I finally got a crack. But I'd love to have had a crack early on. I reckon we needed a bit of speed, but uh, it wasn't to be. So this was the elimination final against Collingwood. Yeah, before. yeah. Uh, Laurie Sandilands tells me that uh, that you guys um, were, were were pretty much underprepared for that match. Uh, you know, in hindsight, looking back, and it was you know a, a real uh, explosive sort of ending to that that game. Would, would you would you fair to say that that's a, a fair comment? Oh, definitely. I think uh, you look back now, and um, in particular, like after we uh, after the last home and away game, we they took us off down to Phillip Island. Yes, for the weekend, and uh, needless to say, we had a good time. And uh, it certainly, uh, I think it had a massive effect on their performance in the end, which was a shame. Because I think that particular team was sort of the uh, the early, one of the very early sides of the big mobile big men. You know, you had Bernie Quinlan, you had Peter Welsh, you had Sokai Salmon, you had Laurie, who was mobile down at full forward. Um, you know, had a good mix. You had Stephen Power and Gordon Casey down the back end were awesome. Dennis Collins on the wing. It, it was a very... I think it was a very underperformed side on paper. Right. Should have done a lot better than what they did. Right. So what do you put the underperformance down to? I've, you know, I've heard Wheels talk about um, you know, some of the lack of, of cash that we had at that time and, and the infrastructural sort of issues that came with that. Was, yeah. it, was it a matter of the resourcing or was it just um, you know, players not quite executing? Oh, look, I think it's, it's resources, but uh, a very unstable admin, I guess, too, in a lot of ways. Um, like in 10 years, in 10 years I was at the club playing, I had six coaches in 10 years. So you know, that's that's pretty destabilising for any uh, any club, I think, at some point. Um, I guess financially, too, you know, they had to sort of sell off players um, to try and, you know, pick up a bit of cash and so forth. Demps had to go and 
probably did that. None of them had to go, but they sold them off. You look at Barry Round, who, when Billy Goggin came, he didn't even know Round had been sold to the Swans. And wow. yeah, but there's a lot going on. Okay. All very, right. un, very unstable, unfortunately. Uh, and as you know, these days, the stability is so important uh, right through the club. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. So here we are, 1975. I guess it was a, a year of great hope and optimism. Uh, you know, on the back of that that finals performance, you were ready to atone. Um, you guys came out flying in the preseason and, and hit round one. Uh, and round two against Fitzroy, you were absolutely destroying them. You were playing a fantastic game in your first game back for that season. Uh, and then um, tragedy struck in that day uh, with one of your teammates. Um, yeah. Do you, do you feel okay to, to t tell us a little bit about what happened? Yeah, no, look, it was. It was, um, Neil was, uh, he was such a skillful, tough big man. He's a, he was one of the mobile Rupp Rovers, but he was, a, he, was, he was a good size, great size back in those days. And I think he had the capacity to use the bill in that to really make an, an, in, an impact with the club as far as, you know, our success. And yeah, and, you know, just that freak, freak uh, accident. And uh, I think it hurt quite a few of our players um, who, who went through that. I think Peter Welsh was certainly affected by it. He was sort of never the same again, I don't think. And he's a good mate of mine, Welshy. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a sad time, and uh, it was uh, it was a tragedy because he was a brilliant footballer. He really was, and he he was a, they're only just getting to know how good he was. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, Laurie Sandlin said, you know, you guys put together a string of victories after Saxe's injury, um, and you were playing on on emotion, going out there and saying, let's let's do it for Neil. And then yeah. I guess things changed very suddenly. And, um, you know, he, he said that, um, you know, there was a trauma that really Im impacted the players. And I guess at that time, men were probably hardwired to just get on with it and um, probably not realising the toll it took. That'd be um, fair to say. Oh, definitely. You know, it was, you just had to, you know, get on with it. You know, it was hard enough and get on with it. it was sort of the mantra back in those days. But I don't think uh, a lot of the players... Now, if they reflect now, would realise the the trauma that uh, how it affected them, and they probably realise more so now than they would have back then at that time. And I guess that's indicative of a lot of the stuff nowadays with the uh, people a lot more switched on as far as uh, those sorts of things go, and the trauma associated with it. And they deal with it a lot better now than what they used to, which is which is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Well said. So 1976 comes along and um, there's a bit of a changing of the guard that comes along. Um, we get a new coach and uh, that coach was probably one of your uh, your idols, in fact, which I'm sure you'll speak about. How did that changing of the guard sort of uh, rejuvenate the club in some ways? Um, yeah, it, it brought a new level of fitness to the place. And mate, we were very fit. And, and yeah, B Billy was my, he was my peanut boy <laughs> as a kid. I had his posters everywhere. I just loved him, just the way he played. And I guess I modelled my game around him a, a quite, quite an amount too. But uh, I loved it because, he, he, you know, he was, he, he was like God to me as far as football goes, you know, it was fantastic. And, uh, but he certainly got us very, very fit. Um, and we're a good, hard running team. We were very fit. He changed the way we played, and he changed. I think he changed the, the way a lot of teams played initially too. With, with that, and uh, yeah, I think it was a tragedy when we we lost the uh, the elimination fi elimination final to um, to the Cats after being what six goals up at three quarter time. Oh, good, you know, because we had the team to really go on with it. Then it would really have troubled troubled teams because we were good, very good, fast running side at that stage, and with good big men as well. Yeah, so I understand there was a drawn match in the last uh, home and away game of the season against Carlton, which is yeah. like an absolute cracker. I've seen some of the previews of that, uh, some of the highlights on YouTube. So so I guess you, uh, I don't know if that, uh, you know, stimulated your run into the finals and you had belief? Oh, I think we had belief before that even, you know. We, we, we'd, uh, we'd messed up a few times, but um, we had to, yeah, win or draw that to get in. And so that... And the sneaking like we did on a draw was, was pretty amazing. So, but we were ready for it. And we, and we, we, 
we played well. We had had them covered the three quarter time, and then yeah, we just let them run over us, which was really disappointing. So, so you're right in saying that we were like uh, five or six goals up at three quarter time. What, yeah. What, how did so? How did that slip between our fingers? Oh, I don't know. You know, it's. Uh... Well, they call it these days momentum, but I think we probably just thought we're home a bit and you just drop off that little bit and sides get a get a look in and it's very hard to stop, even back then. Teams will get a run on, even though, you know, if they get a run on, if someone starts a blue or something just to slow it down and break time, which you can't do these days, but there'll always be something happening. But, uh, yeah, they just got over the top of us, which was which was... I was really disappointed because uh, I thought we really had a team that could have gone on really challenged. Right, right. Well, it wasn't to be. 1976 was in the rearview mirror. 77 comes along. And uh, again, we've had we've had some really impressive start to the season. You and your game, uh, if you think 76 was a breakout year, you went to next level. And by round five um, against the Saints, you slammed through five goals. And uh, had a, had a day out. I don't know if you recall that that particular game. Yeah, no, I do. It was not, it's nice when you get a few goals. I was uh, I was lucky enough. I, I I was able to kick a few goals. I, I think I have nearly averaged one a game, which which I'm quite happy about. But um, yeah, that was a good game. I had sort of probably I think uh, when Billy was there, I um, I was probably the fittest I was as well for about two or three years there, even after Billy left. And that made a massive difference, you know, not having to sort of get over injuries and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, no, they were enjoyable years, even though the success wasn't there that we really wanted. Yeah. And, look, despite the, the, the club's lack of success, here here are you. You uh, you get the tap on the shoulder from the, the Victorian state selectors and uh, you make your debut for the Big V. How was that honour? And uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the teammates that you played with uh, and against as well? Oh, look, yeah. I had, um, I was so lucky. That was just, uh, that was awesome. Um, my first game was probably the, you know, the, the highlight, my first first game with the Doggies, which I loved, but certainly playing with the uh, the Big V was enormous. And you got, you know, played with Malcolm Blight, Robbie Flower, you know, Percy Jones, you know, and just oh, Kelvin, that, that uh, Normie Goss, you know, you go through the, I've got a photo up on the wall actually, and you look at it, and there's Brownlow medalists there. And we played down in Tassie, but the players you played with were just legends of the game. It was just, it was so good to be able to spend time with them and talking to it, but to play with them was just phenomenal. It just, yeah, it was just something else. Yeah, what, a, what an amazing experience. And, and am I right in around this time as well? Uh, there was a little bit of hijinks that went on. Uh, you, you, we mentioned uh, your old mate Wheels a little bit earlier. Um, <laughs> and uh, I understand that there was a game there uh, where um, where so there was a jumper switch and um, and uh, you, you took on the Bombers to to fool them a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened on that day? Yeah, it was one of Billy's tactical moves. He, he was never afraid to try anything, Billy. And uh, I'd been in pretty good form, so I, and so he thought, well, let's take the pressure off a little bit. Let's swap jumpers with wheels. So I wore thirty-five, and uh, and um, Terry wore mine twenty-five. Of course, Terry's in the back pocket of that. And the, the side story of this was really interesting. My dad's sister, and that that, that uh, her husband, he was a mad bomber support. So they went to watch the game to, to watch me play, and that they'd contacted dad and. Uh, some stay and sit on. Oh, look, we've been watching, and uh, Jeff's not doing so well. And uh, but but uh, Wheeler number number uh, twenty five is he's kicked four goals or three goals or something. First time in his career. It was a classic. Yeah, that, they 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 didn't pick it up at all. But it was good. It was yeah. It was certainly an interesting one. I had a pretty good game in the end, so it was it was good. And Wheels had a good game too. I'm not even. I can't remember if we even won it. I think we might have done, but uh, yeah, out Windy Hill, classic place there to play footy. But yeah, that was a really interesting one. That one. Well, well, I actually looked up the result in that, and uh, believe it or not, that was the club's highest score in the history of our club at the time. We ended up winning by really? hundred points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I like playing Eston. Eston was they were sort of a rival in those days. They were just up the road. They're just north of us, so. Uh, Western suburbs, sort of a little bit north, but um, 
I enjoyed playing against Essendon. And you had Ronnie Andrews and uh, Stevie. They were tough, but uh, they, were, they, were, they were straight up because I enjoyed playing against them. What was Ronnie Andrews like playing against? Because Alistair Ford and also Simon Beasley said he came <coughs> running at them a couple of times and they just almost ran down the race and, and, and packed off and went home. He was wild. He was wild. He was one of those ones, uh, you know, just uh, he'd get you, but you wouldn't know. You wouldn't see him coming. He'd just get you. It was like that in those days. It was uh, it's interesting. Like these, these days, you, could, you wouldn't get away with it. Like Ronnie would be rubbed out for life just about by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was sort of, it was, you know, it was, it's all relative. It was a, it was a different game then, but, um, and, and things changed, but yeah, I wouldn't swap it. It was, uh, it was good footy. It was good, tough footy, but it was good footy too. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So here we are, 1978, uh, a really bizarre season for the club because we, the bookends of it, the start and the end, we just got on a succession of losses, despite, you know, this phenomenal talent. And, uh, you know, a centre-half forward, a generational centre-half forward in Calvin Templeton who, you know, yeah. blew the competition apart with his goal kicking that particular season. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, why? And we you mentioned a bit of the instability, but, you know, with this list and, you know, some of the performance we put together, because we exploded in some games, uh, yeah. and, yet, you know, the flip side of it was uh, was a bit of a horror show. So why was there this uh, yin and yang of our performances? Oh, it's... it's... Yeah, I had my theories, I guess, back then. But um, we used to train very, very hard. Mm-hmm. And um, even on a Thursday night, you know, it'd be, be, be big sessions, you know, but with small numbers. So I think we sort of got to a point where um, we'd lost a lot of our depth through uh, players being cleaned out and uh, moving on to other clubs and that uh, through, you know, you know, good, solid reserves players but uh, who could come in and do a really good role for two or three weeks I think that really hurt us hurt us a bit there we just sort of ran out of not ran out of players but ran out a bit of depth at times Kelvin was he, he was phenomenal in that that those those days and uh, well he was most of the time off he was just that um, did a lot of work he did a lot of work building himself up to become a strong centre forward but I think uh, in retrospect I think it probably harmed him more than it uh, helped him because uh, you know, later on his knees gave away and um, his biggest asset as far as I was concerned was his ability to jump. He could just jump from anywhere, jump from anywhere on top of anyone and uh, take the grabs and and, and, and kick, kick well and he, he sort of towards the end of that time he started to lose that ability because of his, his bulk and uh, strength. But yeah, that was very frustrating times. They were very frustrating. As players are frustrating and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and yet it was punctuated with this one amazing day in round 13 against the Saints <laughs> at the Western <laughs> Oval. Um, it was just like a Wild West shootout, wasn't it? And uh, we had oh, 213 points. Tell us about what happened and um, and your, your great man, Calvin Templeton, what on earth was going on in that last quarter? Well, I reckon he's, uh, he's probably touched the ball five times in that last quarter and uh, dropped them cold, but he got paid the marks. It didn't matter. that the, the, the umpires have, were in it as well and uh, they got caught up in it. He was just unstoppable. And uh, I think the classic was um, Mocker Dunstan. He, he's kicked eight, I think, and he says, don't I get a mention? <laughs> As a ruck rover, he's kicked eight. So, uh, yeah, no, that was, a, that was a big day. That was, a, what, 32-odd goals or something, was it? Yeah, 30, 32, 33, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's a classic too because that, that the next day on the Sunday, and Sunday morning training was always a a big day. It was a big day. And uh, they, they took a team photo and there's players in Ugg boots. There's players with no socks on. It was just, yeah, it was just something else. And then the scoreboard up the back behind us. Yeah, brilliant. I, I, I'm putting that photo up right now, and uh, you know it's a marvelous. And if you if you, you you take a really close look, you can see some players with those Ugg boots that you mentioned. Oh which, yeah, it, it oh. was. It was just it was, a, it was an amazing day. It was just uh, just domination for four quarters. Just absolute domination. It was uh, yeah, no matter what we did, it didn't matter. It was it clicked, come off. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Now, it was around this time as well that I understand that you used to like going down nice and early you know, to support the uh, the boys in the reserves and 
and get down and, and watch them a little bit. And uh, there was a teammate of yours uh, one day at the MCG, uh, Peter Munro. And uh, <laughs> can you tell us what you saw from your vantage point? Oh, M- Manzo was a classic. He uh, had the great pair of hands. He, he was a very good footballer, but he was blind as a bat. He, he couldn't see. And, he, and uh, I used to love getting down, you know, you get strapped and uh, get in the dressing gowns, the old dressing gowns, and go down the end of the rates and watch the, the resis, it's, which I'd love to see see now because it was just so good to watch the young ones and see how everyone's going. But anyway, we're, I'm watching there away, and uh, here's Peter, and uh, next thing he's balls up, up the far end. He was playing down at full forward. He's sitting up on his poor full-back shoulders. He's gone up for a grab, and the ball was up, up the other end. He's, he's, his eyes have picked up a, what he thought was the ball was a seagull. He's, he's, he's launched himself on top of the defender, and uh, oh, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. It was so good. <laughs> so, so when he's come down without the ball and um, and realised what uh, what was the reaction from? Oh, him? Look, I don't know if he, he knew what to do, and the poor old fullback, he was just. He was nonplussed. He didn't know where to look or even what to say. He just, it was just, yeah. it was an amazing thing. I don't think a lot of people saw it, but uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a special time, that one. Yeah, brilliant. Love that. Uh, well, we're going to get him on at some point, so we'll ask him about, all about it. Um, oh, yeah, he's a good fella, Peter. He's a, he's a ripper. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now, 1979 comes, comes along and... Um, Wow, what uh, what an amazing turn of events for for a man of your age. In fact, the youngest uh, VFL uh, captain at that point to be uh, to be bestowed the honour to be the skipper of the Bulldogs. How how did that come about, and um, how was that honour for you? Oh, that was awesome. I was uh, yeah, I certainly didn't expect it, but um, I guess you know, as a kid, you aspire you aspire to be the best you, best you can. You know, just to one play uh beautiful for me. I was lucky enough the doggies gave me that chance to do that and then uh over the years I, I unfortunately I uh I guess I impressed them enough with my leadership and and the football even though I probably you know struggled a bit with injuries and so forth that they chose me to be captain that was you know when you, you look at the people who've been the captains there and uh uh, Teddy, of course, Teddy Senior and uh, Laurie Sandlins. He was my captain when I first went there. And, um, you know, and you look at the captains now, it's just, uh, yeah, it was just a, just an absolute privilege and uh, certainly an honour to uh, to be able to lead the doggies. And uh, it was interesting. We had, uh, there, there was one time, you know, the, the banners, the big banners you'd run through. And um, one particular day, I've got Bluey Hampshire running behind me. I've hit the banner this day and I have I've just hit it and stopped dead. Absolutely <laughs> so dead. Yeah, couldn't get through it. Couldn't get through it. Bluey's bang hit me from behind, lifted me up and taken me through it. They'd used masking tape and I couldn't bust through it. I bounced off it. <laughs> couldn't get through. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was uh that was one of the highlights, certainly being skipper. Unfortunately, um probably injuries uh curtailed me sort of from then on, which was unfortunate, but that's footy, but I'd love to have led them for a lot longer. And, uh, but certainly given that opportunity, uh, I'm forever grateful. It was just, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Oh, phenomenal. Your name's up there in lights with, you know, some of the greats of the club to, to have led. And, and Dougie Hawkins uh, earlier um, said that one of your greatest attributes was just your ability to get around some of those younger players and inspire them and just nurture them and take them under your wing. Um, you know, do you have any recollections of some of the, the young guys who you really feel proud of, of being able to sort of bring along? Oh, c- certainly Dougie. Doug, Dougie was, uh, he came very young. And, um, brilliant, brilliant skills, brilliant football. He was wild, though. He was absolutely wild. A brave good boy. He was, uh, but he's just so skillful right from the very word go. And I used to love playing with him because I knew if Dougie got the ball, just find space, he'll hit you, you know, and uh, he wouldn't hesitate. And he, his football brain was was t- tremendous. His skills were tremendous. And uh, to see that the sort of development, those sort of guys coming coming along was just, yeah, the, the, we, need, we needed good kids coming through. And um, 
certainly Dougie was at the pick of them, obviously playing all the games he did and uh, one of the legends of the club. But yeah, I had a great time with Dougie, having to look after him there early on, but uh, we still get on well together and, and enjoy ourselves. But yeah, I think that's important. Like uh, I think, you know, Chocker Royal, he'd come down uh, towards the end of my career and it was good to see him. He was, they have been trying to get him down for a long time. He was a very good footballer at Bansdale in the Latrobe Valley comp. And he, he come down and become a tremendous player too and set improving him and Stevie Wallace. And uh, they also were very young when I was just finishing. And uh, to see the kids come through and uh, improve so much is just enormous. Yeah, well, Chalk speaks in the interview that we had with him about you. And he was, uh, you talk about Billy Goggin being your idol. You were his and uh, he absolutely loved you. And, and you know, to, to walk through and have you as one of the mentors was uh, was something that he's, you know, forever grateful for. Uh, Ch Chocko was a terrific footballer. He, uh, it's a pity he didn't come down a little bit earlier because they'd been chasing him for a while. So he was a brilliant footballer in the Little Trove Valley. And uh, when he come down, he just slipped straight into it and did, did a fantastic job and, you know, played well for Victoria and, uh, you know, it's, Ended up, uh, you know, coaching and so forth. So he had a great career. So it's good. It's good. It's enormous to see the young blokes improve so much is really good. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the 1983 season that you sort of touched on, it was a real changing of the guard. You talked about Wally coming through, Choco. In fact, there were 10 um, first gamers in the red, white, and blue in the first game. Yeah. Three. How was that changing of the guard? And um, was that sort of a new era for the Dogs? I know it was your last season. Uh, yes. How did, how did you see 1983? Uh, yeah, it was good to see the influx of new newbies in there. I was sort of, unfortunately, I was at the end. I just sort of, uh, with, with injuries, I was, what, 28. So in relative terms, I was pretty young to uh, give it away, but I just couldn't do the work. And um, see these young guys coming through and, you know, training, working hard and, um, you know, developing their football was uh, really pleasing and it certainly uh, showed, you know, as the years went on from there where they started to become really competitive again with the influx of, you know, Choco and Wally and uh, you know, Peter Foster and all these guys. That, there were so many of them and uh, they did a great job from there on, which was really pleasing. Oh, incredible. So you talk about your injuries. You uh, You were... Reduced to just five games in, in your last season in 1983. Yeah. Uh, in the last game, round 22, the last home and away game, uh, you guys were 40 points down in the last quarter. Um, so uh, fair to say it wasn't going to be much of a swan song, yet uh, something turned around. There was something in the air that day, uh, knowing that this was going to be your last game. What changed? And do you remember how that uh, that game ended? Oh, I don't, actually. To be honest, I don't. It's sort of... Uh... Yeah, it was um, it was a funny time because I I, so I knew the end was there because uh, I just couldn't physically do the training and that and uh, and being a little fella, was, you know, you lose a few yards of pace, they start to catch up with you pretty quickly. <laughs> but the, the the important thing was to be able to do the work. But yeah, I guess that was mainly like I knew it was the end. I was I was, I was done, um, and it was a it was a shame because it was. Uh, I'd love to have played a lot longer, but that's pretty. And uh, I certainly, I've got no regrets. The uh, the game's been very good to me. The dogs were fantastic. I wouldn't have changed anything. They supported me so well. And um, I just love the dogs. They're just, you know, they're the best. Incredible, incredible. Well, look, I think it was the Saints that you played and uh, you ended up getting over the top. And you were, you know, you were a part of that. Uh, some of the, you know, the critical uh, plays at the end and uh, ended up getting across the line by less than a kick. So, so you know, it was a successful end. But what, you, you sort of say you knew the end was there. Walking off for that last time, were you holding out hope that you'd return in 1984 or did you go in thinking, I'm done? No, I think, no, I was done. I yeah. was done. I, the, the body, uh, I was, I, I'd been through quite a lot of rehabs around that time sort of thing, like the last three or four years just getting there. And it was fine. It was, that was okay. That's what you've got to do. But... Uh, yeah, I just felt like I, I couldn't uh, give what I, I couldn't give what I, I needed to give at that level. I think was the big thing, and uh, yeah, I, I had no regrets. That was the time to go. Yeah, well, look, 137 games, 136 goals. 
you, you went through a fair few coaches you churned through that you talked about. Was there, were there any coaches in particular that sort of s- stood out? Uh, you know, obviously, you know, you idolised Billy. Was, was he the best of the bunch or were there others that, that you, you really look back on? I did idolise Billy, but uh, Donnie McKenzie was good. Uh, you know, he, he did a good, he was terrific. He was very, uh, very studious, Donnie, and uh, very passionate about the dogs too, which was, was good. He, he was good. Bluey, he had, he had to step in there for a few years to sort of, I think he'd come in there maybe midway through one of the years oh. and took over and, uh, you know, Bluey was Bluey. He was terrific. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, we had a lot of coaches. It was crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it was hard, didn't you? And uh, was uh, Mick Malthouse one of your coaches? Yeah, I had, uh, well, I started with Bobby Rose and then, uh, then it was Billy. Donnie McKenzie, Bluey, Royce Hart, and, of course, Mick Malthouse at the end, yeah. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, it's a lot of coaches in 10 years, you know. I, I wonder why they didn't succeed. It was, yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Well, look, speaking of coaches, you uh, you stepped into the coach's box uh, just uh, about 12 months later. and. Yep. It was- you know, one of those seasons that that you know I fell in love with the club. I was a nine year old at the time, and uh, nine and eighty five. What a year for you to sort of be Mickey Malthouse's right hand man, coach the reserves. Can yep. you tell us a little bit about you know what it was like to sort of be in the coach's box, be amongst that playing group, and also any particular players who were sort of fringe players that you had a really big influence on as well? Oh, they don't name any players. I think I'd like to think I had a bit of an influence on them. It was a it was a, an interesting role, the reserves coach. It was sort of a development role, I guess, but at the same time, it was sort of, I found it really frustrating. But like, um, I guess uh, I like to have not control, but I like to have a good say in things. And uh, I found that really frustrating as a, as, a, as a reserves coach, even though I did enjoy it with the young blokes. And we, we had a good, good year and we had plenty of players coming through for, for Mick, which was good. But, um, in the end, I uh, I just found uh, I couldn't have the impact I, I wanted to have, I guess, and um, I moved on from there. But uh, it was very different coaching and uh, and playing, very very different. Now I came up to Queensland, ended up coaching up here, and um, I loved it. I had a great time. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a totally different uh, realm to to playing. Yeah, yeah, I bet it was. I bet it was. So with that nine and eighty-five side as well, did you did you have any involvement in the, the senior campaign? Because obviously we got to the prelim that year. Um, yeah. what, what sort of involvement in that uh, that process? Yeah, no, just uh, just as support and uh, doing doing that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, it's just so good for us to you know start to start to compete again and, and get into the finals. It was just uh, it's all about success. You've got to have success. It's so important that. Uh, the clubs just grow stronger from from that, so it was really nice to get back into that sort of area where we're starting to win games, we're playing finals. It was uh, very enjoyable. So, so tell us a little bit about um, some of your uh, your all time favourites. Um, let's start with some of your opponents first. I'd love to hear, you know, who are the ones that uh, loom large as you know the ones that you really admired playing against. Um, I guess one of the toughest ones I played against was uh, Gary Wilson at the Fitzroy. Oh. He just ran. He just didn't stop. And he hit the lines. He he ran. And that is he's phenomenal. He just went the whole game. He was hard. He was a hard one to play against in that respect. Um, Lee Matthews, obviously, he was, just, he was nuts. You know, he crossed that white line. And uh, I remember one day at, uh, at, put, at the Western Oval, and he's, I was spun out of a pack in front of the members stand there and um, lifted my head and he's lethal about meter off me coming at 100 miles an hour with steam coming out of his ears virtually and luckily I was out to sort of get off the ground put the forearm up and sort of bounce off him when I landed I reckon about three meters back on my feet fortunately and I was out to sort of get around but if I hadn't seen him I'd have been non compass mentis but he was such a good player though but he was tough he was very very tough yeah. um yeah Bartlett was hard his uh he just he just ran hard, you know. He's a yeah. He was all over the place and uh, didn't give the ball up too often. But uh, that made him even harder to play against, I think. But yeah, they were that. There's so many. Anyone um, anyone who plays at that level is a good footballer. 
and, they, and then when they die, they they're all very very hard to play against. But certainly, uh, as far as playing with players, um, you know Gary Dempsey and you know Rant the late Roundy, even you know we only had the year the year with Barry before he moved on. He was a very good player, but Demps was good. Kelvin was a sensation, you know. Brownlow medals. Teddy, you know, I, I love playing with Teddy. We used to change in the forward pocket, and that he was so skillful. Uh, the press used to give him a hard time because they reckon he wasn't trying because he was very laconic in his movements, but he was just so skillful. He wasn't that. He wasn't quick, quick, but he was. Uh, he was a good player. Wheels. You know, they're all good mates, but they're all good players. And of course, Dougie. Dougie was Dougie was Dougie. He was just a, a brilliant footballer. Uh, Andrew Purser, Peter Featherby, you know, the West Australian boys. Dennis Blair, he was terrific on a halfback flank. Stephen Power. There's so many of them. It's just, uh, I love it. I just, and, and when you get with them now, it's just so nice to, it's just like nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Just get back to the, your old selves again. Love so that. I must do. I've got to get. I've got to get down more often. <laughs> You've got to get down more often. Dougie said the same thing. Get him down here, and um, you know, oh, I, I, I imagine that camaraderie is, you know, some one of the most important things. You know, you, you talk about the success or lack of, but you know, really, I guess, you know, the thing that comes through from all the player interviews is is just the friendships that uh, that endure and um, and the memories from that. Is is that the thing you take away uh, the most? Oh, definitely, definitely, Matt. The um, you just. You live and breathe it with them, like you know. You, you do all the hard yards, you know, on those windy nights and wet and cold, and you know, you you you'd rug up in tracksuits and two jumpers, and you you still couldn't get a sweat up some nights. But you do the hard yards, and then you know, you get belted or have a good win or get belted on the on the Saturday, then front up on Sunday morning after you know having a few during the night and do it all again. And uh, yeah, that. And just the camaraderie with them and because you used to spend so much time with them even back then you know it was still you know four nights a week or four days a week pretty much and then and playing on the Saturdays and great friendships and you know and but you'd go into battle with each other and you just you do anything for each other it was yeah that was special that was a special part love that love it love it so, so am I right in saying that uh, you've become a bulldog supporter? Uh, you know, you didn't return to the cattery and uh, follow the cats post post. Oh no, no, always a bulldog. Mad, mad, very passionate bulldog supporter, and uh, whole family are they? But they're all switched. The whole family are massive bulldog supporters. So uh, I love it. Um, I get a bit vocal at times, but um, anyway, we'll win this week. That'll change things. Hopefully, it'll be good. Hopefully, we had Danny Dolray on recently, and he said he was at the 2016 Grand Final, and you know he was he was an unsuccessful player in terms of premiership success, but yeah. uh, in the ground and 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 witnessing that and having all the the supporters coming up and just saying, you know, Danny, you're a part of that. He felt that he was a part of the the bulldog story and a part of that 2016 flag, even though he wasn't one of the you know 22 players out there. Yeah. Have a sense of that yourself. Oh, definitely. Yeah, uh, I was, I was, I was. I was there for it. I took my mum, who'd never been to a grand final ever. And I, uh, we were so wrapped up. Oh, I was so wrapped up in it. I didn't even take it to get lunch for her or get her a drink or anything. We were sitting there the whole time. But we just, uh, we, we were lucky. We had plenty of uh, doggy supporters around us. And oh, I couldn't forget. It was just, we were off our faces. It was just the best. To see them win, finally win one after so long, was just, I was so proud. I was just so proud to be, you know, a doggy, a doggy supporter, and to, and to have played with them, and uh, to see the joy in everyone's faces and the supporters around, it was just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Yep, absolutely, what a day. Um, uh, GJ, we've um, we've got one more thing to do before we uh, we end the podcast, and we've absolutely loved hearing your story today. Now, without a word of a warning, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but we always end this podcast with uh, with a 60 second quiz. And yeah. um, we're in the hot seat um, for one last time today. We're uh, we're going to give you two categories to choose from. And uh, yeah. we, we put all the, the, the people on, the, on a ladder. At the moment, Luke Darcy's at the top of the list. If you jump to the top uh, by the end of the season, you'll be playing against Dougie Hawkins, who was the 2023 quiz winner, uh, to play off for a portrait painted in your honour. So I'm backing <laughs> you in today, Jeff. Uh, oh, good. 
my yeah. memories used to be good, but it's not so good these days. <laughs> well, well, let's see how that goes. I'm going to give you two choices. So you can you can either have the category players names that start with the letter W or the 1970s, which uh, which takes your fancy. Oh goodness me! Let's, <laughs> oh God, let's go to the 70s. The 70s. All right, I knew you'd choose that. All right, fantastic. Well, look, we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock and your time will start after I ask the first question, all right? So, okay. So good luck. Uh, you're in it to win it. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Pressure's massively on, all right? Uh, it's not like Ronnie Andrews coming at you. This is uh, this will be easy. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. Question one. Gary Dempsey won seven best and fairest during the 1970s. Is that true or false? True. It's false. He won six. Teddy Whitten played his last match in the 1970 season. Is that true or false? False. It's true. Bernie uh, Quinlan scored the most goals. Bernie Quinlan scored the most goals for the club in the 1970s. Is that true or false? False. False. It was Templeton. Which year did Dougie Hawkins play his first senior game? Oh, God. Yeah, you got me. Uh, 78. Yeah, you got it. Who was appointed the club captain in 1979? Kelvin Templeton. That was you! <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> what, was, what was the total point scored in the Bulldogs' highest ever score in 1978 against the Saints? Oh, pass. Ah, 213. How many times did Laurie Sanderlands top the goal kicking in the 1970s? Twice. It was four times. Uh, which year wow. did David Darcy play his last game at the club? And this is right on the siren. Last chance to get this one. David oh, Darcy. My God. David Darcy. Uh, what year oh, was it? Yeah. It was in the 70s. Early yeah. on. 71. You got it. Great ending. I got that one as I was watching the, the podcast from, from Darcy's when he was talking about his dad today. Uh, See what I was up for. <laughs> beautiful. Well, your research. So good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, we're putting the scores up right now to see where you're at. Oh, look at that. You've done incredibly well. Well done, mate. <laughs> I've missed a few easy ones, unfortunately. That's okay. Well, the one that you didn't pick yourself as being the captain is the most unforgivable, but we'll let you off. Oh, I know. I know. I, kept, I don't know why I didn't pick that one. Yeah. Anyway, that's okay. Well, that's okay, absolutely. Well, listen, there's only one thing left to do uh, to end the podcast today. We always uh, end by saying, how would you like to be remembered? And do you have any final uh, messages for Bulldog supporters who absolutely love you, GJ? Oh, I just I just, I just thank this from their support because, I, you know, I, I still remember that imprinted in my mind, you know, when you, you're going out or you, even you get there before, you know, all the seconds are playing, and you've got those hard-nosed supporters there in the same seats, same place every week, the Western Oval, even the away games. And they're just fantastic. And they're just their support for the club and the support for you is just phenomenal. And uh, I'll be forever grateful for for that that those people, you know, the, the, the supporters. And uh, I think one of the, the unfortunate things about today's football is the supporters don't come out onto the ground when you, you know, as soon as the siren goes, because I just, you know, I just, it's to love it. You, you try and sort of position yourself close to the race, depending on the score at that stage. But most of the time, you, you take ages getting off. But it was just fantastic because the supporters would be out there chatting, and you know, it was just, yeah, I, that. And um, I guess too, a lot of uh, humility is a big thing. I, I think in footballs need need to be humble, and part of that is uh, recognising the supporters and uh, what they do for the club. And uh, without them, we, we've got nothing. You know, how many years have the dogs been going now? A hundred and uh, hundred and fifty odd years now, isn't it? I think. Hundred hundred forty one is. Hundred forty one uh, years. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's phenomenal. And uh, you think of the support through there, and I was just one little tiny little part of that. And uh, I'm forever grateful for that and grateful for the club for giving me the opportunity to, to do something that I absolutely loved and wanted to do all my life and then to be supported by the people around there. You know, it's just been, yeah, it's been fantastic. Wow. Well, what beautiful words. And you know what? I've, I've been inundated with people saying, get you on. 
And uh, we've we've heard your story today. The, the fans are going to absolutely love it. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of our heart uh, for a wonderful uh, for a wonderful interview today. And uh, thank you for everything you achieved and everything you contributed to the club. You're uh, you're a champion. Yeah, oh, thanks, Matt. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Absolutely, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Jennings. Thank you. Awesome. Blue and 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 bl